All right, welcome back. Um, so for this video, we'll talk about the shockwave setup effects for the blue stuff. Um, but I want to mention to you guys, I might have missed this, um, is the motion of the shockwave as opposed to the motion of the fire tornado. As you can see, as the oops, as the shock wave gets sucked in, um, it moves in a clockwise motion. I mean, it spirals in a clockwise motion. Um, same, same here with mine as well. Clockwise motion, and then when it turns into the fire tornado, it's the counter clockwise um, motion now. Um, and I feel that it's a very important um, contrast in motion for the two different phases because it helps with um, um, giving us that feel that it's a totally different energy that's hitting us uh, at, the, at the moment. So with that in mind, um, it's little details like these that I find that are incredibly cool for um, creating motion in stylized things um, just adding some contrast in the motion really helps with the overall feel and impact okay so moving on to Houdini so the blue shockwave stuff is under the blue shockwave node um, so we'll just dive right in and see what's happening in there. Um, just delete some of these things. Boom. Don't need that. Um, I'll put these out here, there. All right. So obviously we've got that start point that we've always been using for the blue stuff. That start point just has the start frame attribute uh, of when the shockwave will um create the shockwave um so in here i'm just um merging two different settings of the point for the power burst source so i'm just setting the p scale that the power burst source reads for the initial size i'm telling to use the attribute and we've got the density and the temperature so that's the first one and then the second one is they're about the same just less density on here and less temperature and less initial size so when we feed that into the power burst source node the power burst source node is set to shockwave by the way <clears throat> um let me have a look at what our shockwave looks like you see we have this trailing extra shockwave there that goes behind the main one. Um, the reason why I did this is just to add some padding to the shockwave. Um, Cause I want it to be more full, um, closer to the center. So that's pretty much the only reason why I added that. Um, cool. So another thing with the shockwave timing, um, let's have a look at this. Boom. Um, it goes from very small in the next frame it gets pretty large um, that's the kind of um, mm, uh, three frames that I want um, so the f initial bit is small the next bit is pretty much close to its maximum length um, so I didn't I don't think I changed the animation ramp overall but what I've done was change the interior and exterior expansion so if you put down a power burst source node set this to start frame um, one three I guess set this to four <coughs> shockwave have a look Maybe sorry, frame when I put one four, boom, 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 boom. It's it it looks quite lin linear, even though it's not. Um, so you start off small, 
and then it, it grows and grows and grows. Um, so all all I did was changing these interior expansion and exterior expansion just to um, just to get them to be a lot bigger after they are after their initial size. Um, okay, cool. Um, let's have a look at the ramp. The ramp, yeah, the ramp still stays the same. Um, awesome. So that's pretty much it for the Pyroburst source node. Um, I have three sources, by the way, for the Pyroburst source. I've got the density and the temperature. Um, I've added some noise on both of them. Temperature and um, a burn. So the burn, I'm rasterizing them here um and uh, what i'm doing with the burn is i'm just renaming that pressure so that axiom source so that axiom solver will read that as a divergence field um cool um one more thing is um we're scaling over duration as well and the trailing of those points as you can see um, if you see this other guy, we set it to scale over trailing. It scales it um, at the tip, the edge of the shock wave. Duration scales it over time. There you go. And then under the output attributes, we've added some velocity noise. Um, cool. So if you have a look at that noise, Boom. We got some noise on there. All right. So I want to talk about um, this next bit, the attribute adjust vector. So all I'm doing here is just I'm multiplying down some of these velocities by a noise, but just the length. I'm not doing anything to the direction. All these are just still pointing the same way but all i'm doing is multiplying the speed of these points with the noise and also um, another thing that i did is under the post process i've set a maximum length um, one thing i kind of don't like about the pyroburst source node is on the initial frame, we get all these crazy high intensity vectors. It might look cool when we do explosion and stuff, but um, this doesn't really help me with the shock wave. Um, I was having some issues with the look and everything. So with maximum length set to 16, I managed to um, keep that down to a minimum. And yeah, also because with the volume maxterized attributes, I'm blurring out the fields with the velocities. <clears throat> cool. <clears throat> um, one thing I want to I want to talk about as well is how this um, expression and Python um, thing came out. I'm not sure if many of you know but under the pyroburst source node under the quick setups you can put down a source volume and that will give us a volume rasterized attributes after and so this is pretty cool so if we remove decide to remove one of these sources so, so let's say we only have um, density and temperature now and this will automatically be filled out. That's cool. Um, yeah. Okay, so next, um, let's have a look at our temperature. So the temperature for our Pyroburst source node is pretty cool um, because we've added some noise on our temperature field and that's pretty cool um, but 
I'm also using an, a volume adjust fog to adjust the temperature and multiply it with some noise. So what that gives me is just more breakups on our temperature. So I'm just trying to break up the um, obvious multiplication of our temperature with the noise. Um, so with this volume adjust fog, I'm just using a more um, s small element size to multiply down the temperature to give it some more detail. Cool. And that's pretty much it. Um, cool. And then we're caching that out as our source. Zoom. Perfect. Um, okay. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about how to how some of the forces that we have available for Axiom, um, how we can use them for our little shockwave. So yeah, I'll see you there. Bye.